Hi guys, it's the Tipler 3848 and we're back with some inter-career mode here. Uh, on the screen at the moment we can see we're just having a quick look at the calendar and what I think I'm going to do is get February and March out of the way in the next two episodes. So that'll be uh, lots of games cut up very, very shortly. So today we've got two games and the remainder of the very important, important, important transfer window because obviously we sold our goalkeeper for 58 million we got just under 50 million of that so we need a new goalkeeper and a couple of key areas where uh, I think I need to strengthen as well so before all of that we're gonna go into the first game against Empoli and a bit of an odd game this one because well you'll see you'll see it was just I don't know it had an odd feel to it but we kind of set the precedent straight off the bat by not scoring <laughs> But, yeah, we are back on the attack here. Nope, that's been cleared out for a throw. Uh, but he throws it straight into Obi, who pops it into Osvaldo. Nice turn. Takes on a couple of players, and boom, left foot. Straight sort of through the goalkeeper, which is a bit weird. Uh, Osvaldo, he's been a bit of a godsend. Thank God they uh, decided to loan him. He's only on loan, isn't he? Yeah, he's on loan from Southampton, I think it is, after he had that bust-up. So, thank God Inter Milan chose to do that for me, because with Paloshi and Palacio getting injured, it was a bit of a nightmare, I must admit. But Osvaldo really, really has stepped up to the plate, but it's, it's kind of one of those weird ones, because, you know, it's not your player so you don't want to grow him too much unless you're planning on signing him or if you've got an option to sign him but look at that for a goal uh, this pass could be put into DVDs showing people how to pass because it was that good and Jan and Veer what is he even doing up there he's my CDM for God's sakes but he's absolutely leathered it into the bottom left like he was a striker it was reminiscent of Tony Adams against Everton in uh, 1998 when he was put through by Steve Ball, that one. But not quite that good because, it, one, it wasn't Arsenal. Two, he's a centre-back, Tony Adams. But we uh, drop our guard. We seem to do that so often. As soon as we've scored, your guard drops. And although that is a ridiculous cross from there to find him. I mean, shenanigans. Utter, utter shenanigans. But we're trying to get the third here. Nope. Post denies as it always does when there's an open goal. To be fair, normally it is the bar, not the post, but that's where the game ends. An important three points there. Uh, an away game, it's always good to get the three points. But, like I said, all important is these transfers. Obviously, from the back end of the last episode, we were looking for Mr. Shakiri, but I decided, pet check. Why not? because he's moving, hopefully, to Arsenal. Come on, Wenger, sign him. But, uh, yeah, he's moving, so it's realistic. Realistic transfers are better because it makes things make sense. Varane, another one. Uh, Centre-backs are going to be a key area that I'm, I'm going to need to look at and invest in because I've got so many old centre-backs, which I believe I show later in this video. But we found this guy, uh, Karna... Blick. and he plays Ren and his stats look amazing but you can see that we're sort of thinking about it ish but we're looking at it because I can sign him for free in the summer or I can sign him now so I think we put in a cheeky inquiry so we'll see how that goes Nevin Subotic, Subotic however you want to see it is a, a second target we've been looking at because he's just great and uh, I don't know, with Dortmund only making the Europa, I think, in the end, and that's going to be another realistic transfer, maybe. But with Inter finishing eighth, possibly not. But you got to judge me on Inter of last season, who are still quite good. But you can see here we got a contract declined by Mr. Kadira. Again, he's one that I'm trying to get for free in the summer, but he looks like he's uh, going to keep rejecting me. You can see that our Shakiri uh, offer was rejected by Bayern, which is annoying because PSG are lurking. So I thought, all right, PSG went for 11 million, that got accepted. I'll match it. We'll see what happens. 
But uh, yeah, we had to take Jonathan out of there because we don't want to give them 11 million and Jonathan. So we put that back in and hope for the best. You can see Gulu, 21 million. A bit rich for us, really. Uh, Rufier is another goalkeeper I was looking at, but he's again quite expensive for us. And then I've just got a couple of, the, of uh, young players at the bottom thinking about the future. The future of Inter Milan. Where is that taking me? So we got Lucas, oh sorry, Luis Muriel and a couple of others down there. So you can see that PSG's Shakiri offer was accepted. So you'd expect mine to be uh, shortly. But you can see 17.5 million for Sabotic, which is not too bad for the amount of money we got. Varan, 16 and a half. So we're obviously sort of weighing up each individual one, but here are my centre backs. I mean, look at them. Vidic, very good centre back, but I think he's 33. Campagnaro, 34, and he's only a 77. So that's really an area that I've got to be looking at. Got Andreoli, who's still in his 20s, but he's only a 75. So. I'm really going to have to buy some sort of mid-20s, 22 to 27-ish uh, centre-backs soon to fill the gaps when these players eventually move on because they're getting old and their stats will start to decrease. So, for that person who only has six months left on their contract, they want 17.5 million. 17.5 million for a player that I can get for free in six months? Are you mad? So we're going to put a cheeky offer in for Sabotic. Now, we're really looking to address the goalkeeper situation. And these are ones that I actually still had on my shortlist from the summer when I bought Silicon. I think I bought them for like 12 million. So to sell them on for 58 is pretty good. I'm pretty good at finding these ones. Last uh, on FIFA 14, it was Luis Suarez. You could buy him for about 35 to 40 and then move on after about six months for about 70, I think it was. So that's what I'm good at, just picking up these little ones. So we're having another look at this centre-back. He's 25, very strong, which is good in a defender. His pace is okay, stamina, it's all a bit middle of the road, but he's only 25, so we could grow. So I make the decision, get him for free. Get him for free next month next month next season and uh, he can be one of our main centre backs see how much we can grow him so we've put a couple of inquiries in for goalkeepers because that is all important and you see that weirdly David De Gea was one of the cheapest I think he was 18.5 million whereas Tim Kroll was 23 million and they must be insane and then Stuttgart think that I'm gonna part with Lucas Podolski Really? The Poldy? No, not a chance. How could you sell that smile? I love Podolsky too much. He's not going anywhere. Ever. He's he's going to die at Inter Milan now. That's it. <laughs> but, so, how could that happen? They accepted 11 million from PSG, and yet they said no to me? Annoying. Very annoying. So we went to check on Shakiri's situation, because I was sort of panicking, because... He was going to be my uh, definite target, absolute shoe in We've got this guy, but as he showed there, he's actually signed for PSG. There's uh, nothing I can do about it. He's gone, so I'm going to have to find a new right mid, because all the right mids I've got are kind of terrible. Joel Obi is playing there at the minute, and he's actually a centre-back, but uh, not a centre-back, centre-mid. So, we get that centre-back. He's going to be coming at the beginning of next season, so we get that's going to be important. I can get by with the, the centre-backs I've got for now. David De Gea. We had that accepted from Man United. 18.5. Again, kind of realistic because he is moving. He only wants to go to Real, uh, Real Madrid. But he's moving, so it's realistic. So, you can see here we're having a bit of a nightmare with Petr Cech. Because he doesn't want to leave Chelsea. Yes, you do. You do want to leave Chelsea. That's exactly what you're trying to do in real life, Petr. Why are you fighting this so much? Come to Arsenal. I mean, Inter Milan. But, so, we put in an approved contract to Mr. Cech. And I pick up Mr. Rabio. He's a fantastic young player. Only 19. And I'm really looking forward to, to sticking him in the team and seeing how much we can grow him. I think he's going to be kind of a sub for now. 
coming on in each game, see if we can grow him and then maybe look to start him next season. But we're having the same issue with Sabotic that we had with Czech, where he's not happy. I don't want to leave Dortmund. Where, 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 where? But oh, yes, you do. You want to leave Dortmund? Come to Inter Milan. We will love you here. But just putting in a few more inquiries. I did so much work in the transfer market in scouting, looking at players. But you look here, we've got Mr. De Gea, who has actually accepted my contract offer. But I wasn't sure, because I was looking at some other players like Leno and uh, Rufier again, and Czech, I was still waiting to hear back from Pet Czech. And I also had this uh, issue. Look how many players I've transfer listed there, and nobody wants to buy them, and my squad is full. So there's nothing I could do. And we had to go into the next game because everything was taking so long. Which is a cup game against Verona. I think it's Hellas Verona, this one. And you can kind of see how this game's going to go. I don't know why or what was wrong with this, but look at that. We, I don't think we won a defensive header pretty much this entire game. One reason and one reason only for that. But you can see we can't even get the ball off them and he's just nipping on the inside. Boom! Here is the reason we won pretty much no headers the entire game. Mr. Luca Toni. I know he had a really, really good season in Italy, but I couldn't get near him. And I, I couldn't get near them this entire game. I don't know why. I mean, look at that. He just completely split my defence open. There's nothing I could do about that. I hounded them, I absolutely hounded them. Whenever I got the ball, it fell to one of them, or... Again, he's completely free at the back post. What are my defenders doing? Thank God I'm going to start replacing you idiots, because you're crap. But we were 3-0 down at half-time. 3-0! 3-0 down! That's unheard of. But we've got a cross in here. Can we do something finally? And we do. Icardi scores. Could the comeback be on after that? chicken dance because he refused to pick up the ball and take it back to the uh, the centre. But we huffed and we puffed and we did not blow any houses down whatsoever. They packed their defence as only Italian teams know how to do and Jose Mourinho of course. But even when they got the ball back, look at this this passing was ridiculous. I couldn't get near them the entire game I could not get near them and it was so frustrating but that puts me out of the cup and all because I couldn't strengthen because look at all these players I've got some of them are out on loan look how many I've got on the transfer list absolute dead weight but I couldn't get rid of them I ended up releasing a couple of players just to try and get some new people in uh, Juan Jesus or Jesus uh, kicked off in the middle of it. I want a new contract. I want more money. Wow, 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 wow. So I gave him a new contract because he's going to be essential to our season. But this is what I'm talking about. No one would buy them. Nobody would buy anyone. So I had to release a couple of players. Uh, Lille then come in for a Cardi, who's not one of the transfer listed players. But I'm not going to sell him. Well, not for a measly fee that they were offering anyway. But I went for 28 because I pretty much knew that they wouldn't go for that. But we buy a new right mid. Completely out of left field. Weird. <laughs> but uh, Lucas Moura. Don't need to say much about him. I'm pretty sure everybody knows about him. Lucky we got him because Barcelona were inquiring right at the end there about him as well. So we're lucky that we picked him up when we did. But we've done a lot of business. We've got Lucas Moura. We bought in David De Gea. And I just couldn't get these centre-backs through the door. I don't know why. Actually, I do know why. Because my bloody squad is full of idiots that nobody wants. They're all on the transfer list. Nobody actually came in for them. We're down to three hours left. I'm praying that somebody comes in because then I could quickly move on one of the centre-backs that I had. But you can see the hours ticking away. I don't need to tell you that nothing's going to happen. Ah! Apart from, we see the one on the office, that's what we're looking for. 
We rush to the office. Transfer offer. Brilliant. Oh, it's to send somebody out on loan. But that is going to be the end of the transfer window and the end of this episode. So I hope you guys have enjoyed as always. Follow me on Twitter, like, subscribe if you like what you're seeing. I'm going to try and get a few more videos out today, so I'm going to leave it there. Thanks very much.